Welcome to the Lady Yum Yum Show. Today I'm making a lemon cream pie for screenwriter and first time author Charles Scalfani. I'm out here gathering my super secret ingredient for it, limes. Let's hit the kitchen. I have the oven warming to 350. We'll need that in a little while. But first we have to make our crust. And to make our crust, we'll need two tablespoons of butter in a glass pie plate, a tablespoon of sugar, and six low fat graham crackers. I'm using the ones without sugar and cinnamon. If you use the cinnamon sugar variety, I wouldn't use the extra sugar that I'll, I'll show you in this recipe. So the next thing we have to do is put these graham crackers in a bag and crush them to a pulp. This is the fun part. You get to just take out your aggression on crackers. Perfect crushedness. Is that a word? Should be. So now I'll add the sugar to the bag and shake it all around while I do the hokey pokey maybe. There we go. And again, the sugar is optional. I just like my crust a little sweeter than some people. Next step is to uh, melt the butter. Most graham cracker crust recipes call for a lot more butter. But I find two tablespoons works well and saves lots of fat and calories. I melted the butter in a pie plate so I don't have to wash another bowl. I'm sprinkling the graham cracker crumb mixture over all the melted butter. And then I use a fork to mix it all up. I use the fork to even out the mixture and push it along the sides. Sometimes the hands are the only thing that works. If I would used more butter in the crust, it would have been a firmer consistency, but this low fat version works well. Now I'm going to chill this in the refrigerator while I prepare the filling. Time to make our filling. It's really, really easy. All it is is 14 ounces of fat free sweetened condensed milk, two large eggs and a half cup of fresh lemon and or lime juice. So you can do all lime, all lemon or my favorite way, which is half and half. I like to roll my limes for a second before I slice them, uh, any citrus really. It tends to break up the cells a little and you get more juice out of each fruit. I'll just juice it on my citrus reamer now. That worked out nicely. Two limes was exactly two ounces or a quarter cup. I need a half cup of citrus total. So now I'll do a quarter cup of lemon. Don't be too aggressive or you might get some of the bitter pith of the fruit in your juice. Perfect. My half cup of juice. My handy dandy reamer has a little strainer on it too. Makes it convenient. My two eggs. And 14 ounces of my fat-free sweetened condensed milk. So it's called lemony cream pie, but it's really just fat-free milk in here. Break my yolks, and you just stir this until it's completely smooth. It just takes a couple minutes. There we go. Everything is completely incorporated. It's a nice smooth mixture. So I'll get the crust out of the refrigerator and pour this in. You can double this recipe and freeze the second pie. It should last about two weeks. So I decided to make lemon pie because every time we go out with uh, Charles for dinner, he orders lemonade. So he must like lemon, right? We'll see. There we go. Now this just goes in the oven for 15 minutes. The pie is just about done chilling and Charles is on his way over. So I'm going to make a little whipped cream to top it. Now normally I have this pie with no topping whatsoever or maybe a little powdered sugar but it's a special occasion, so I decided to have a little special treat on top. If I'm going to eat something decadent, I want the best version I can have. 
So I've chilled my bowl and my beaters in the freezer for a few minutes so they're very cold. I'm going to use a half a cup of whipping cream, two tablespoons of sugar, and a half a teaspoon of vanilla. Make sure you use real vanilla, not that imitation vanilla extract stuff. Just beat this until there's enough air in it to make it fluffy. Perfect, you can see as I pull this up, the peaks are firm and hold their shape. Oh, there's the doorbell, perfect timing. Mm. So what do you think? It's really good. I really like it. Does it taste it. like lemonade? Very. Better. I know you like lemonade, <laughs> so I had to make you learn why. It's better than lemonade. Oh, there, you hit a home run then. Thank you. <laughs> I'm joined Great. today by uh, screenwriter and first-time author Charles Scalfani. Charles recently had a film come up on Amazon and Netflix mm -hmm. and just self-published his first book. So tell me about the book. Um, it's a story of Roger Lennox who uh, wakes up and finds out that he's got total amnesia. And um, he's helped by Dr. Grazier, who um, helps him rebuild his memory through dreams. And um, he di eventually discovers that he holds the key to um, the fate of thousands of people just like him. I found it was kind of this mix of genres. I like mysteries, so I like that part of it. And it had a love story in it. And then it kind of had some science fiction, I guess I would call it. Yes, yes. There's, there are sci-fi elements in it, but it, it's it, at the core, it's a mystery and it's a love story. So there's plenty for everybody in the book. So tell me, how'd you go from screenwriting to writing books? Um, the movie Solitary took so long to go from sc uh, screenplay and then, you know, many years of rewrites and trying to get the movie made and, and you know, it was a five secure period. And I've written so many screenplays and I realized there's just no way. I mean, just do the math. I'm not, not all my stories are going to get out. So when the Amazon Kindle Singles program came out, I, it was a program for short form. And I realized, hey, wait, I can take my screenplays and I can convert them to books and self-publish by using Amazon Singles. So tell me, how'd you go from screenwriting to writing the book? What's that process like? Typically what I do is I take my screenplay, I have two screens. So on one screen I put the screenplay, and on the other screen I have my Word document. And I read a portion of the screenplay, and I rewrite it in more of a book form where I have a lot more freedom to um, be more descriptive. I, have to, I can think about more of the details of how it would be shot, if it, was being, uh, if it was being shot as a movie. So with the screenplay format, it's very terse, you're very limited in what you can do. Uh, the book form really frees me up. Um, in fact, uh, can I read to you uh, an example from both? Absolutely, okay. that would be great. All right, so I'm going to first read the, um, uh, a portion of the screenplay. Interior Park Day. A group of eight-year-old kids sit around a wooden picnic table, wearing birthday hats and impatiently waiting for the cake and ice cream. Roger, as an adult, sits under a nearby tree playing with a handheld game. A strange man sits next to him. The stranger is dressed in a suit and hat from the 1940s. Roger's mother walks up to him. Okay, and now from the book. It's a beautiful autumn afternoon in a public park. The auburn leaves of the trees are beautifully contrasted by the clear blue sky. The brisk wind dislodges a lone leaf from its position atop a sturdy maple tree, causing it to fall ever so haphazardly downward until it lands on a picnic bench where a group of eight-year-old kids sit wearing birthday hats impatiently waiting for a cake and ice cream. Roger, as an adult, sits underneath a nearby tree playing a game on a handheld device. He is so focused on the game that he doesn't notice when a strange man, dressed in a suit and hat from the 1940s, walks up and sits next to him. The strange man says nothing while Roger struggles with his game. After a short while, a woman approaches Roger and silently stands over him with her hands on her hips, shaking her head in condemnation. When Roger doesn't look up, she crouches down and grabs his arm, but like a child, he pulls away. Neither take notice of the strange man who watches them intently. So it's basically you get to be the actors and the director yes. in the book yes. where you can't do that in a screenplay. Right, and it's almost like an insult if you tell the director what to do or you tell the actors what to do. They'll toss it out anyway and, and do exactly the opposite. So you, you don't have that luxury in a, a screenplay. But when you're writing the book, you have to think, okay, how would the director shoot the scene? What would the actor's motivations be? How would... What, what, what would they do? You have to be everybody in the book. 
So tell me more about the technology behind self-publishing. What would you like to tell people about the process? It's really easy to self-publish. Anyone can do it. I mean, Amazon makes it easy. They have great documentation online. Anybody can do it. The real question is why are you self-publishing? Why do you want to self-publish? If you want to publish because you want to be rich or you want to be famous, I think those are the wrong reasons. I certainly didn't do it for that. Um, I'm not making a lot of money in this, but I did it because I love to tell stories. I love when people say, oh, I loved your story. That's what gets me excited. That's my pay. And if that's your pay, then you absolutely should be self-publishing. You shouldn't wait. You should start today. Well, thanks for joining us today, Charles. And I hope a lot of people out there were inspired to self-publish a book. I know a lot of people have uh, books on shelves and it's a way of getting them out to everybody else to enjoy. And to find out more about Charles's book, In the System, as well as the movie Solitary, check out our website. Thanks again. You like it. That's good. <laughs>